Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Shockbot, and today I'm giving some tips for dreams. So if you want these tips and don't take that the wrong way, well, here are some. Uh, that being said, I want to put a, you know, disclaimer at the beginning of this video to say that this is not a comprehensive guide, nor is it a beginner's guide, nor is it really advanced, because honestly, I am not that advanced of a creator thus far, because uh, I've only spent about, you know, 20, 25 hours with the create mode itself. But I do have some information here that's based on things that I ran into while I was creating that I either figured out myself or, well, for actually the majority of the five things today, um, as my friend Andrew about. And you will hear his voice in a bit when he takes over for a few different sections. Um, I will obviously leave his stuff in the description, so please go check him out. He is wonderful. He created something out of Silent Hill and Dreams, and it's kind of blowing up, and he's just very, very talented. And he does do game design just, like, in general for a living, so go check that out. He's great, and thank you, Andrew, if you're watching this, for helping me with all of this kind of stuff. But let's get right into it. If you do enjoy this type of video, please leave a like down below. Feel free to subscribe if you want to, but no pressure as always. So, number one, involves the precision mode and trust me when i say this precision mode is a godsend or if you don't believe in, in god or whatever you know is some kind of send but it is fantastic and what it's used for it works very well but there's a caveat to that that i'll get to in a second so for precision mode i recommend that a lot of people use this more largely because not only does it let you move things more precisely as the name would imply but it also allows you to move things specifically in the x y or z direction or z if you're from anywhere that's not the united states and that's incredibly useful it doesn't force you to move it in only one direction but it does kind of snap you to that and it snaps it a lot harsher than like the grid snap for example does so you're not really going to have any issues if you just want to move things and fine tune things by moving them left right up or down or back or forward you know the three x y and z directions uh it is much easier to do that with this tool if you only want to modify one of those it also allows you to focus specifically on rotation and allows you to get far more minute rotation than the original you know moving things around without precision mode on and that's basically what i use it for granted it does not work for everything and especially if you're trying to rotate things in 3d space and get it just right it is a bit awkward to use that because it only lets you rotate in the x direction or the y direction at once so what i would recommend far more than that for this sort of thing the whole rotation and fine tuning aspect of that i would recommend just using the nudge tool which is absolutely fantastic and it's not really a tool but it basically just means hold r2 or the back trigger on the move controllers and it will allow you to just tilt things or move things very slightly and by hold i mean just barely depress the button and it should get you the results you want and i do want to emphasize especially with the move controllers the extent to the to which you can fine tune things this way like if you depress it just like a millimeter or two it is incredible it allows you to basically move the entire controller across like your whole chest and it just tweaks it just just a tiny bit and it's incredibly useful um and it's basically like if you were in photoshop using the arrow keys that's the level of fine tuning that it does it's not quite pixel by pixel but it's close so long first one but the second one is pretty basic um and this is actually the reason that i hated the move controllers so much originally i still stand by what i said before and the fact that you don't need the move controllers but this is move controller centric so if you're not interested feel free to skip forward uh but with the move controllers if you're using one or two in create mode and you want to undo well i kept running into the problem where i would hit square and the imp would shake its head at me and that imp is adorable but the amount of time that it shook its head at me and it did not undo and i had to pick up the dual shock and hit undo on that was infuriating but I realized a workaround. Now, again, this is workaround. I don't really know why this happens. I'm sure there's a reason for it that I just don't know, but here's a workaround if you're running into the same problem and just want to deal with it. If you take one of the controllers, and I will demonstrate here multiple times as I create this rather tragic anchor in the background, but don't worry, it got better kind of. Um, basically what you want to do, if you want to undo with the move controllers and you're hitting square on the right move controller and it's just not working, well, take that right move controller and aim it off screen. So like hold it up like the Statue of Liberty's uh, uh, torch or whatever. I think it's the most American thing I've ever said. And hit square that way. As long as it's not aiming at the screen, it will undo the last thing you did, whether it's in the sculpt, you're sculpting on, whether you're not in the sculpt and you just want to undo thing, it will undo the last thing that you did just like the controller would. 
And I don't know why it requires this, but it does, and, and it's just been working for me. So hopefully that helps someone out there. Now, moving back into general tips for anybody, and this is more of a suggestion than an actual, like, use this tool or do this or something like that. Well, it is a do this, but it's not a use this tool or a how to use this tool. It is based around the decision between placing things within the same sculpt and creating separate sculptures for everything. Likewise, I will be handing it over to Andrew to explain his take on this and, uh, you know, get a little bit of a creator special going on here because I guess that's what this video is going to be now. Cool. <laughs> It is worth separating your sculpts by object, rather than putting multiple objects in one sculpt. Say you have a bowl of fruit, rather than making one sculpt with an apple, an orange and a banana, create a separate sculpt for each fruit and the bowl, then group them. This way you can reuse any of those fruit in your scene at very little thermo cost, and you can create variety by rearranging your sculpted parts. Keeping sculpts separate like this gives you better flexibility and performance. However, keep in mind there is a limit of around 10,000 total sculpts per scene. So moving on to number four, this is an issue that I figured out myself because I spent so darn long having issues with it. If you are having trouble painting something, for some reason you're trying to spray paint something with a certain color and it's just not working, or certain colors are working and other colors aren't, or the color is not coming out in the color that you want it to, Get out of your sculpture, so get out of sculpt mode, and go to the options. And for move controllers, that's triangle square. For uh, the dual shock, it's L1 square over the object, and this is the object that you want to paint. Make sure it opens up the full tweak mode, and you're not opening up the tweak for any group or anything like that. And look at a few things. You're going to want to look at the hue color, you're going to want to look at the tint color, and you're going to want to look at the original color. I'm not sure those are the exact names, but basically they're the three color options. If you want to paint something and you want it to be true to color when you get out of the sculpt, make sure that you turn the hue color and the tint color all the way down and keep the original color all the way up. Now this will make sure that whatever you're looking at when you're not in sculpt mode is exactly what you will see within sculpt mode in terms of color, obviously. Now I had so many issues with this because I didn't even realize I edited the hue color. I thought I only changed the secondary color, so I turned down the secondary color, turned up the primary color, turned down the primary color, did all those kinds of things until I could figure this darn thing out and it was really that simple. So highly recommend that if you do tweak things like this, you maybe do it later than I did. Or if you do do it later, just make sure that you uh, fix it in the future. And obviously feel free to go back afterwards if you are just trying to create things. But um, yeah, that, had, that was a huge headache. It will also help that, again, like I said before, if you split them into multiple sculpts. But well, this is why I'm telling you, because I wasn't that smart originally. So moving on to the last one. And again, this is another one from Andrew. Thank you very much, Andrew, for this one. If you are trying to clone something and you want that clone to maintain the properties of the original, even if you change the original, there is a live clone feature. And I'm going to hand it back to Andrew to continue explaining that in a far better way and voice than I can. Live cloning lets you make a special kind of clone where any changes to a live cloned object will change all other clones linked in this way. Currently, you can only do this using the clone tool, which is found under the tools menu. Make sure to select the live clone option circle when using the tool to switch to live clone mode. So like Andrew said, this is incredibly useful, but I will say I don't think this works for tweaked options. For example, if you tweak an object, or a clone rather, even if it's a live clone and you change its flex or its looseness or anything like that, I don't believe it changes the rest of the live clones. That or I was having a visual glitch, but I did have to go back and reclone those anyways. So if you do plan on tweaking any of the options, make sure you do that first. But this does solve quite a bit of problems, and um, yeah, it was great to learn. Ken, thank you, Andrew. Do the best. Okay, but that is all my clones. Clones. Oh God. See, you see that? We well, see what this does to me. That is all of my tips for today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you guys have any tips of your own, or if you want any questions answered that maybe I can ask andrew about because i probably don't know the answers <laughs> just kidding if i can answer them or if andrew can answer them or any of you can answer them in the comments down below uh please let me know and uh yeah let's keep chatting and keep getting better at creating together because that's that's what we do as a community anyways hope you all are doing well have a wonderful day and i'll talk to you guys in the next video goodbye bye
Bye, guys.